So here we have an LG washing machine and I'm trying to replace the clutch and this wash plate that's down here needs to come off and after doing a lot of research on the internet I find people saying uh, well first of all I find the one from the company where they do it with a machine a brand new washing machine and they left it right off and no problem well this one's stuck and there's a lot of uh, forums out there where people say it's been stuck but nobody had a video of it and since I have a channel even though it's fun with cars I figured this might be useful to some people so I'm gonna give it a try uh, pulling up manually prying it up nothing seems to work but one of the things that was suggested was 2x4 across the top a couple of ratchet straps and pull it up. Well, I put uh, the first two in and as soon as I started to tighten up the ratchet it started to slip back off and it, it wasn't going to do anything except slip off. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one of them out and I'm going to wrap it around that spindle so it can't slide that way or at least not very far and then I'll put the other one in and wrap it also so I'll end up with two straps here and I'll tighten them alternately and try to pry that up hopefully it'll work and it'll uh, help some people because I didn't see any videos out there of anything like this I just had it described in a you know forum where the people were typing their comments in so uh, first thing I'm gonna do I'm going to try to wrap it around without removing the other one and this is gonna be hard to do holding the camera but I think I'm going to need two hands for this. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this strap, put it through that slot all the way around, all the way around, and come in here so that it's wrapped around this spindle. Then I'm going to take the other strap, do the same thing, and put it uh, put it so that it's over here so I'm pulling from both sides of the thing when I tighten these ratchet straps and I'll, I'll tighten those alternately so that I'm trying to lift it straight up uh, one thing that I will tell you is I have these bigger straps and I could not even get them in the, the slot so that's why I went to the thinner straps so gonna shut off the camera see if I can get those wrapped around and then give her a go okay a couple things I neglected to point out that I have put the screw back in here so that when this pops it doesn't come flying out the screw will catch it the other thing I noticed as I was putting these in is you gotta make darn sure that as you're putting these in these um, don't get one of these straps don't twist like this as they're going under the plate because if they do you're never going to get them to pass each other so that you can make that loop around the spindle so I've got one in uh, hopefully it won't interfere too much with the second one going in Okay, I've got these both wrapped around the spindle underneath. A uh, little tip. It's easier to take the second one on the outside of the first one because you can tug on this first one and give yourself a little bit of room and you need it, believe me. 
to get that second one to go through there. But best tip of all is make sure that these guys are going in flat. Uh, so now I'm going to hook up the 2x4 across the top and go ahead and uh, start to put some pressure on this thing. Okay, kind of looks like a mess in there, but as you can see, I've got the straps coming out at uh, 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock, if you will, on a, on a clock. And they're both connected, uh, double hooked like that, for safety. And trying to keep these straps from tangling because this is going to get tight. Um, so they look like they're out. And what I'm basically going to do is ratchet these up a couple times. The first thing that's going to happen is that the whole tub is going to come up. Because that's attached to the bottom of the tub and the tub is kind of freewheeling. So I'm listening for a pop, which would tell me that it has separated. I guess the thing here is some people have said it's worked and other people went to really drastic measures like drilling it out. Oh, there's a pop. I don't know if that was a good pop or not. <laughs> is flexing big time over here but it still hasn't released so I'm gonna try one other thing uh, and I'm gonna have to put the camera down or maybe mount it on a tripod to do it is now that I've got all the tension on this maybe I can take a long bar Put it on this screw since the screw is only partially in and drive the screw which is attached to the shaft down and pop it loose from the wash plate. So I beat on that for a while and I was given up and I went to go get another bolt to put in it because I was afraid I was going to destroy the bolt that holds it in. I came back in and gave a crank on these uh, these ratchets seems to have come loose. They loosened up and then they tightened up. So I don't know what's going on. It's definitely not coming off. Something moved. I don't know, maybe that's just the belts tightening underneath. The ratchet slipping. I don't know either. Whether I'm going to get this off in one piece or it's going to be time for a new washer. <laughs> But I've already discussed that with my wife, and 
Yeah, this is definitely cocked up on the side here. So maybe it just needs to be. If it indeed has popped, maybe it just needs to be forced from the other side or something, or maybe loosen the tension on one so it's not cocked. That might be preventing it from coming off right now. Okay, folks, so here's what worked for me. I got a longer bolt of the same thread, and I actually put two washers in between it and a nut so that when I put a socket on it, it um, would bottom out on that washer and give me something to drive against. So I screwed that into the spindle and then I got out my, it happened to be a 13 millimeter head on that one as opposed to the 10 that's on the one that's in there. I got on out my 20 inch long extension and it looks like another 6 inch extension. I put the bolt part way into that. Put the socket on it and I banged on this with a hammer till it came out. But it is out, so I'm not going to film the rest of the um, rest of the repair process because there are videos out there from the manufacturer that do that. Um, the only thing I might do is if I find out that there's something else that's not working and I come up with a trick, I'll add it to this video. But for now, thanks for watching. So the video from the manufacturer says just lift the tub out. Well that's not working either. So what I've done is I've put that uh, the bolt back in to the what is the clutch actually the shaft. Put that back in and I'm gonna try to support the tub and whack on that till it breaks loose because we got the same problem here as we had on the other one. Okay, so here's the solution to getting that stuck drum off, uh, and it worked pretty easy with this three-jaw puller. I just put it in the top of the shaft, hooked it into, there are six notches here, I hooked it into three of them, and with very little effort it came right up. So, uh, that might be my last entry in this. I'm just going to do the rest as it's stated on the uh, video that the, I guess it's the LG company puts out where they do it on a brand new washing machine and you don't run into these issues but I think everything else is on the dry side of the washer so everything else ought to go according to the way it's done in the video that I find online thanks for watching so I think I found another improvement on their uh, video that they have posted telling you how to do this job. I don't know why they didn't tell you to try. This is a 24 millimeter uh, nut here and if they've already told you to uh, use an impact wrench on the tub bolt, why they didn't tell you to put one here. Seems like a better plan for than taking an adjustable wrench and tapping it with a hammer if you've already got an impact socket available or impact wrench available and you have a 24 millimeter socket. Buy again unless I find something else to improve on. Well, now they tell you to pull the cover off of the stator. Since nothing else has been as easy as they say. I'm trying this. Well, it doesn't appear to be frozen because it moved a bit, but again, not as easy as they say. 
blue belts a little bit. Maybe that'll help it come off. as easy as they showed but it actually came out without any special tools or any outlandish techniques. Now I'm going to take the stator off and again unless I find something that's easier I'm finished with this video. Okay I've got the clutch and bearing assembly up. There is one more thing that's worth mentioning here that they don't show you on the video is that this clutch and bearing assembly is held in with bolts on this outer ring and they, they clearly show you them removing that on the other video. However, it's also held in with bolts on this inner ring. And we got to take all those bolts out and uh, in order to, to get it out. So make sure you don't try to force the thing out after you've removed the, the bolts from the outer ring here because these guys on the inner ring are still holding it in. I think this is the last time I'm coming back to this video but who knows <laughs> there might be some issues with installation by now one thing that they didn't mention on the video that I saw was usually when you have a circular thing you try to torque or tighten them in a pattern that gets them all you're always tightening across from one another so that it pulls it on uh, flat. I'm going to put a bit of white lithium grease on all of the splines where things uh, were stuck. This one wasn't really stuck, but just to be sure if I have to take it off again that I don't have a problem with it, I'm going to lubricate it up a little bit. And that should stay there for the life of the part, at least, if not the washing machine. Another thing that they make look so easy on their video is getting that uh, rotor on there. The thing about it is there are magnets inside that because that's the actual, actual motor to this washing machine. Uh, so trying to line up those splines was difficult. I had to pull it out and turn it a bit, pull it out and turn it a bit, and probably took me about, I don't know, maybe five, ten minutes to actually get it lined up. I pulled it off and turned it around back, backwards to make sure that the splines actually matched, and it went off. Battery in the recorder uh, died on me in mid-sentence, so Anyways, once it went on backwards and I knew that the splines matched, then I took it off and just very carefully turned it a bit at a time until the splines matched up. And it went on about a half an inch, and then I had to wiggle it some to get it to seat all the way on. Uh, I don't know how the guy does it so easily in the video I saw, because uh, it's kind of tricky. Uh, Maybe he had a fake stator that didn't have iron cores in it that wasn't attracted to it or something. I don't know, but he put it on in one move. Okay, trusty torque wrench is set to 88 pounds. He had a very short one that he could fit inside there. I don't, so I had to use an extension.
again, he makes it easier, look easier than it actually is. Because the drum inside wants to move. This is another thing they didn't tell you about. In tipping the washing machine, these rods that uh, um, the tub actually hangs on can fall out. Okay. I can't put that rod back in, I don't think, until I get the thing on its feet. I don't know. Uh, that might be difficult too. This is the rod that supports the basket that had come loose. It's pretty easy to do. You can see down in there once you get the lid up. And it just slips into a groove. But they could have warned you about that because I was kind of worried when I had it laying on its back as to whether I'd be able to get that in easily or not. But it was easy. So after all that hassle and all that trouble Put it back together, same symptoms. So the next thing I'm going to try is the, the clutch motor, I guess it's called, uh, which I guess I should have gone there first. But come on LG, you could give some better explanation as to what could be wrong whenever you get the E6 error code. Um, it's ridiculous that there's no mention of this. All they do is say, call a repairman. I'm a little bit ticked. So there you have it. After replacing the diverter motor, as it was called, on 
on the package. Guess it wasn't on this package. It must have been on the shipping, the shipping papers with the part. But anyways, there's the part. It was the clutch motor, which LG doesn't even mention. They just say call a repairman. It's literally about a, I don't know, 20, 30 minute fix because I didn't even start changing my, into my dirty work clothes until quarter after 10. It's now 10 to 11. So had to run up and get a few tools and it's actually filling with water. I'm running a cycle through without uh, any clothes in it to clean out any dirt that I might have gotten into the tub while doing the repairs but I guess in the long run uh, versus calling a repairman I didn't pay any more money it was a lot more work but then on the plus side I have a brand new clutch assembly in the, the washer so it ought to last for a while and this is the final time Thanks for wa watching. Oh, one other mention. The video that I saw said torque that to 88 foot-pounds, and I l watched it again this morning, and I'm not sure that's 88 foot-pounds. It might be 88 inch-pounds, so if you can find a resource that tells you what the actual torque spec is on that uh, before you go doing it according to the video you might want to check that out thanks for watching